Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Geography Now video, this time for Germany. Wait, which means that... Dass ich diese ganze Intro auf Deutsch machen soll. Wie ihr halt weiß, ich wohne in Wien, weil ich hier mein Masters-Programm mache. Ursprünglich war der Plan, mein Masters in Deutschland zu machen, könnte ich leider aber kein gutes Programm finden. Äh, deshalb wohne ich in Wien und ich glaube, dass ich die richtige Entscheidung gemacht habe, weil ich ja lieber in, in Österreich als Deutschland leben würde. Muss ehrlich sein. Deshalb freut mich sich sehr, dass ich heute dieses Video ähm, reagieren, reagieren, weiß nicht, was die, die Deutschen sagen, ähm, reagieren kann. Und ja, weil Deutschland ist natürlich der, der Nachbar von Österreich und gibt es viele kulturelle ja, Ähnlichkeiten und natürlich gibt es viele kulturelle Unterschiede. So, deshalb freut mich sich sehr, dass ich dieses Video anschauen kann und mit euch reagieren. Back to English. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to comment, like, subscribe. It all helps the channel. And let's get into Geography Now, Germany, Deutschland, whatever you'd like to call it. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel Beer, Bratwurst Order Bread and Beer, Complicated History Beer, No Humor, EDM, and Gummy Bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. One gummy bear? Yeah, so like one thing, all those stereotypes, those are all from Bayern, right? So Bayern, otherwise known as Bavaria in, in English, is like where all the German stereotypes originate, right? If you go to Hessen, you will never see someone wearing Lederhosen, right? No humor is like a totally a German, a German thing, apparently. I don't think that's true. But um, yeah, so yeah, I don't think that... Uh, that those stereotypes apply to most of the country, mostly just one area of it. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level mm. one, begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in them. central Actually, Western 17. Europe, bordered by nine other countries. You know what I mean. Get little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundesländer, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, Hamburg and Bremen, Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun hmm. stuff. Now we all Now there's one other th important thing to remember. There is the 17th Bundesländer. It is unofficial, however it's Mallorca in Spain. And if you know anything about Mallorca, you know that you can go there for a vacation for a week, only speak German and you'll be totally fine. Very important to not forget the 17th Bundesländer. <laughs> we discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venban Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance mm, is I cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, cool. they split mm. the island of Usedom with Poland yeah, yeah. in the north. Germany is interesting because every state... Yeah, and that was, a, if I remember correctly, I think Poland wanted all of it. So that was actually just after World War II. Um, and this was sort of a Cold War compromise between East Germany and Poland. Uh, I don't remember the history off the top of my head, but I was reading about that island about three weeks ago or so. Um, yeah, I think it was a compromise between Germany and Poland. And Poland wanted all of it, but eventually they just split it down the middle. Might be wrong on that. You guys can let me know in the comments section below. The country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Vorpommern yes. will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms. This guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess <laughs> called the Holy Roman Empire. Yeah, and just look at this mess, right? Look at this mess. Anyone who's played EU4 knows exactly what I'm talking about, but yeah thousands of kingdoms thousands right and it was this super complicated system of how to elect the holy roman emperor oh it was it was a mess to say the least and eventually 
uh, our boy Prussia here would become the largest kingdom and eventually go on to, re to unify Germany in 1876 made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, Later. wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism surges, and in 1871, yep. Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game, we gotta... And uh, so this was actually, so this is done in France, right? So this was after the, uh, the war, between Prussia and France, where Napoleon the Third, I want to say, was actually captured, um, and there's a famous photo of him and Bismarck. I, they, they look like they're just hanging out. So this is where the the German uh, the German what would you uh, empire, I suppose, was was uh, was was officially coronated, if you will. Scramble for some colonies, and that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, yes. and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company. And that was during the scramble for Africa. Company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends. Treaty of Versailles. They lose land. Nazis come in. World War Two. Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally we get the Germany we have today. East Germany. Okay, so like I've covered almost all of those topics. <laughs> if you want to check out my uh, oversimplified for World War II, um, that one that one goes into actually oversimplified Hitler. That's that one, and um, oversimplified Cold War. I've talked at greater discussion of that, but yeah, that's the super oversimplified version of it. The history is super super fascinating. Go check out those videos. I won't spend all the time talking about them here. Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it yes. was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country. Still, as to this still state, 2022 Soviet too. Soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas hmm. the west still uses fluorescent and mercury white tinted light bulbs. Cool. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Frankfurt Munich, yeah. Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some okay. So the the reason why that is is that Berlin has had this this airport project, and I don't remember the name of it, going on for like I think fifteen to twenty years at this point. And as far as I know, at the date of recording this, twenty five August twenty twenty two, it is still not completed. Um, on top of that. It was initially supposed to be completed a few years ago, but they had an issue with the fire alarm system and it was proposed that the solution to the fire alarm system would be to pay people to watch for fires with a radio. I'm not making that up. You could look it up. Top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster nice cathedral, Church, the, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, yeah, the concept exactly. behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no, no speed, speed limit. limit. And it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, Time for level two. Super cool, yeah. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany <laughs> lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mud flats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. That's cool. Then everything I never just knew kinda that. creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Suchspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kinda like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like yes. the Spree, Elbe, Wesse, Rhine, and of course, yeah, and that's in the Danube. And so the Danube flows down um, into multiple countries. For example, the Danube River is where Vienna is situated in Austria, as well as Budapest too. So the Donau, as it's called in German, um, the Donau Fluss is, is a very, very, very important river. Um, that flows into multiple countries. The mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland. And after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the North Flat Plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley. Due to its position sandwiched between oh, really? the Arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of cool. flat farmland, Germany 
Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans absolutely love their bread. There are over three- And Austrians too, my God. So like one thing that I just wasn't used to as much when I, when I well, initially I did my student exchange in Frankfurt in 2018, but also here is like, man, just everywhere. It's like you, <laughs> like they have the whole bakery section. And obviously we have this in Canada too, but it's, it's not the same as like when you go to Rewe in Deutschland or when you go to Pila or Hofer. In, in Österreich, in, in Austria. 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of... Oh God, brötchen. Brötchen, sorry, brötchen, not brötchen. Bread. Hast du gluten-free? Nein! Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. Gluten-frei. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer. <laughs> never seen that in my life. Reign supreme all over as the third yeah. largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even though yeah. the president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only yes. allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless- And again, that was something that also originated in, you guessed it, Bavaria. But yeah, beer here, especially as a Canadian too, the difference in price of beer is insane right even for us I, I i live in austria now but like i said did my student exchange in 2018 so I spent six months living in germany um the, the price of beer is just so un unbelievably cheap like i i think i drank more in my six months of a student exchange than than i ever did in canada in my whole life <laughs> so it's like i remember i would go to the store and i would get a beer half a liter for 50 cents <sighs> In Canada, the cheapest is like at least 250. Insane. About 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks Again. in 1040 AD, can in be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously, and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As mm. of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity, and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forest dominant. Yeah, and that's another thing too. If you ever have to take a German exam, if you're learning the language, you you always have to prepare for a question about Klimaschutz. There is always, 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 like in the write your own section, when it's at the Schreiben section, right? When you have to write, uh, like, you know, I don't know, like your opinion on something, it always talks about green energy. I'm so sick of talking about green energy in my German tests. Can we talk about something else? I know it's an important team. Uh, sorry, I know it's an important topic. I know, but man. The southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch. Adidas! Puma! Adidas! Puma! Yeah, it's kind of like the... Yeah, I remember I said Adidas in Germany and they're like, no, it's Adidas. Adidas. <laughs> I was corrected multiple times from calling it Adidas and rather Adidas. Very important, I guess. Whole biscoito bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the yes. EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has nice. about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, mm. Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter Damn. and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany yes. experiences a, a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government-subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, what are yeah, and so on the topic of immigration, yes, I think Austria is probably the best kept secret for international uh, immigration. 
this could not be true. There's probably statistics pointing to this not being true. But like, I have that feeling that when people think about moving to this side of the world, they always think of Germany and more specifically Berlin. The amount of internationals in Berlin is off the charts. I mean, I think probably you could go your whole life just speaking English in Berlin and you could be fine. Please don't do that. Please learn the language of where you're living. Please, that really bothers me. Anyways, um, but yeah, so Austria, we really don't have that situation. I should probably do a video on geography now, Austria. I'll get to it. But yeah, very, very, very international. Um, that was one thing I noticed when I was in Frankfurt. Um, and yeah, I'd imagine it's just gonna get more international as, as time goes on. Comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak dialect, Hochdeutsch yeah. or yes. High German, which is the standard yeah, dialect. Standard the European Deutsch. Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic based language used along the Czech Polish border, and Plattdeutsch or Low German, which. Yeah, Plautdeutsch is so like a lot of Amish people in Canada, they speak Plautdeutsch because um, that has to do with the history of them moving over. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get into it, but yeah, it's even still spoken in uh, in places like Canada and Amish communities, and especially in the Midwest in the United States. And Mexico, too, actually. Similarities to Dutch, and it's typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the go. world. Beat in terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west <laughs> side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years, as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here, too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They're also known yeah, as being definitely. kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which is where yes. the Americanized, perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Gerndels, Half-Timber, Beer Houses, and Cuckoo Clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. That is, that is perfect. That is a perfect analogy. Nice. Stereotypes. Some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians mm. talk too much, Holstein. That's new to me. I've never heard that one. But yeah, I can, in terms of Berliners being stuck up, yeah, I, I can totally see that don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, yeah. you would say Tschüss, and in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound words to get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungs, Überwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. <laughs> oh, I wanted to try it. <clears throat> this is because many words are Mertudig, or ambiguous words, that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Thing. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, Gesicht. this letter makes a double S sound. However, yes. spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans. Yeah. So in so in the 1990s, they tried a spelling reformation. Um, that was the 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 German government tried to do a a reform on spelling, and it's kind of worked out, but not really. So for example, the Asset in Switzerland doesn't exist. They just use the double S. Right, but the word um, das, but with two s's, which is a, it's to imply the the, the Nebensatz, um, the conjunctive sentence. I won't get into it. It used to be spelled d a s t, but now it's d a s s. Right, and there's other sorts of various um, terms that still use the schafes s, as it's called, the sharp s or s t. Um, but yeah, overall, I think the s t is probably here to stay. What's not here to stay is the genitive, which is the possessive form um, and it's slowly being replaced by the dative. But that's a whole other German lesson. Maybe I can, maybe if you guys are interested, I do a whole video on the German language. I think that could be fun. Let me know. Which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media yes. into German. Yes. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here I to stay. It. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christian. Subs, not dubs, between please. Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. Yeah. Kind of and the most important thing too is that I think East Germany or maybe it's the Czech Republic is the most godless place in the world that has the highest rates of atheism um, I think anywhere in the entire world. It's either East Germany or the Czech Republic but East Germany is, is easily within the top three for the most 
godless, right? The most atheistic uh, places in the world. And this is due to obviously the history with um, the communist ideology, whatever you want to call it, um, being uh, an atheist ideology and obviously suppressing the church. And like I said, that's a whole other history. Maybe I'll do a video on East Germany feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid 50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies yep. and established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In in Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher Gymnasium. linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is Hauptschule. geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the- Yeah, and so this is a fascinating system that I don't really quite understand as a Canadian, but imagine being split off at 10? I don't know, that seems like- I don't know. That seems to sort of ramp up the pressure rather than lower it. No, but okay. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section. Imagine being 10 years old and then having to decide which, which school you want to go to. Like 10? Man, I could barely decide when I was 16 largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 yeah, talk about the Austrians too. mostly supported by public money and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. <laughs> There we go. Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless yes. if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's yeah. kind of how things are. You monster! They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany. Yes. They even have and for the love of God, don't do the the Nazi the Hitler salute right the Roman arms salute whatever the hell you want to call it in Germany it's very illegal and I think once a year some stupid tourist gets arrested for doing it it always happens the rule the Volkswertung which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities some people say this infringes on free speech others say it's good because it solidifies truth otherwise some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne although he was a Frank but eh, I guess it kind of counts Albrecht <laughs> Dürer, David Friedrich Gutenberg Bach Beethoven Karl Benz Albert Einstein although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the US and became an American Johannes Kepler Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Friedrich Schiller Michael Schumacher Alex von yeah. Humboldt and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can- I thought it was Singapore was now. Oh yeah, I forgot. This video is like five years old. So I think it's Singapore is number one now, but it, it might still be Germany. And kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Good, great video. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German yeah. colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and India. West Germany hmm. during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in cool. the automotive industry. Many South Koreans that. were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The U.S. is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after yes. World War II... and especially in the Midwest, right, in this section here, there is a ton of people that can claim German heritage in the uh, in the Midwest because this is where a lot of the immigration was um, in the beginnings and the end in the beginnings of the 20th century and the end of the 19th century. The Marshall Plan allowed the U.S. to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kick. I'm glad you mentioned that. That was one thing I was going to mention after he was talking about the economy. But yeah, the Marshall Plan hugely important. Um, I've also done some videos on that. 
I think it was uh, um, it was it was the alternative history hubs. What if Germany was split different or something like that? I'll I'll leave a link to it at the top here. Start the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the state of Israel after World War II, which mm -hmm. after the Holocaust left an still have a very to good relation to building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally, as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany. Although many of them may or may not also. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! I'm getting a phone call. Oh my God! Oh yeah, that's staying in. To identify as Kurds, but since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina, in which by default they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. So, is and isn't this a fascinating thing, right? In Europe, we've had hundreds of years of war, conflict, everything like that, and now we've had the longest, up until the most recent Ukrainian war. Um, one of the longest peace settlements, or not sorry, peace settlements, but peaceful times in European history. So fascinating, eh? How much things can change. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North Who side loves love the Netherlands and Denmark. Uh, France though is kind of like the Congo. trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic okay, peoples have existed enough. for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently and the brief time that they've been around they've kind of gone through some of the most intense world revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined yet they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower you got to give it to them there's something True. about the germans and with that yeah. final boss level complete stay tuned another african state germany has ties to ghana is coming up next there we go cool great video i will hope i was able to inform um, because i do have some experience living in germany and it's a country that I really, really enjoy working, uh, sorry, that I really, really enjoyed living in. And who knows, maybe one day I'll work there. Maybe one day I'll, I'll settle down there. Who knows? Thank you all very much for the video. Uh, sorry, for, for watching the video. <laughs> thank you all very, thank you very much for Geography Now for making the video. Thank you all very much for watching. Super appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all very much for your support. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.